All right, uh, in the next part of the lecture, we are going to talk about the ratio test. So the ratio test is um, a test for series of non-negative terms, well, essentially for positive terms. So because so notice that uh, here we are working with the ratio of the absolute value um, of a n plus one and a n, right? So since it, it means that a n cannot be zero because we are dividing by it. And at the same time, since we are working with the absolute value, essentially um, the ratio test is only about series of non-negative terms. Okay. Now, uh, so what is the intuition behind the ratio test? So the intuition here is that, um, well, if the ratio of two consecutive terms of our series is L, it's, well, if its limit is L, then basically it means that if you take any two consecutive terms, so a like a n divided by n plus one divided by n is going to be approximately equal to a n over a n minus one, approximately equal to a n minus one divided by a n minus two, and so on. And th this is like almost L, close to L, right? But then it means that, well, a n is approximately equal to L times a n minus one, which is approximately equal to L square times a n minus two, approximately equal to L cube times a n minus three, and so on, right? Um, until L to the n times a zero, right? So if the limit of the ratio of two consecutive terms of our series is L, Essentially, it means that our series is something like the geometric series, where L is the common ratio. And if that is smaller than one, then the series converges. So that's the um, the intuition here. So the proof of the ratio test is a bit technical. So if you're interested, just, I don't know, Google it up. Um, now, the, the counterpart, so if the limit, because of basically the, the same reason, if the limit of the two consecutive terms of our series is uh, bigger than one or infinite, then the series diverges, okay? And finally, if the limit of the two consecutive terms of our series is exactly one, then the ratio test is inconclusive, okay? So um, the ratio may be undefined uh, if the denominator is zero, something like this, right? So it is possible that our series has infinitely many t zero terms. Then we can't really take the limit of the ratio because it's just simply undefined. Um, well, in, in that case, well, we, we have to apply some, some other tests, right? Or if the limit of the ratio of two consecutive terms of our series doesn't exist, then again, so the ratio test just doesn't work. Okay, uh, so how do we apply the, the this ratio test? So here is an example. Um, so the first thing is to, is to write is, is the absolute value of a n. So in which in this case is 3 to the n plus 7 divided by 5 to the n. So now we need to find the ratio of the absolute values a n plus one divided by a n. Right. So so what is a n plus one? Is essentially the same thing. Only I need to replace n with n plus one. All right, so this is three to the n plus one plus seven divided by five to the n plus one divided by a n, which is 3 n plus 7 over 5 to the n. Well, div to, to divide by a fraction, we just flip it over and multiply. So this is this the same thing as to, to write times 5 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 7. Okay, um, now the good thing is that um, some stuff is going to cancel out. So 5 to the n divided by 5 to the n plus 1 is, is just 1 fifth times 3 to the n plus 1 plus 7 divided by 3 to the n plus 7. 
So, and again, uh, this is a fraction. So we need to, to figure out its limit. We need to divide by the, um, basically by, we can either take out the largest uh, term or we can just divide by the largest term in both fractions or, well, I guess we can just, just take out the, the largest term. So let, let me do that. So let me, uh, one fifth is still here. So let me take out the largest term. Um, so three to the n plus one divided by three times here I have one plus seven over three to the n plus one. That's the numerator. And the denominator is one plus seven over three to the n. Okay, so now uh, three to the n plus one cancels out. So this is just three. So this is three over five times one plus seven divided by three to the n plus one divided by one plus seven over three to the n. So this goes to zero, this goes to zero. So the whole term has, well, has limit three over five, okay? Since three over five is less than one, we conclude that the series converges. Well, and again, um, it has negative one to the end, so it converges. Absolutely. Okay. Um, right, so here it all goes. Now, in the, in this case, it is not the only way to um, find to find out. So another thing that we could do, we could just split it into two parts, right, and then. We have three to the n divided by minus five to the n is really the same thing as negative three over five to the n, right? Um, so our series is really negative three over five to the n plus uh, seven times one over five. To the n. So our series is a combination, a linear combination of two geometric series. So both converge because the common ratio is less than one. So our series converges as a sum of two convergent series. This is probably an easier solution, uh, really, but whatever, right? So um, here is all right. So here is yet another solution using the limit comparison test with three over five to the n again so that's a third approach to do it so there are multiple ways to do this question okay um so i guess it, it's not the, the only way but my purpose was to kind of to, to demonstrate how the uh, ratio test works uh so the true power of the ratio test is in um evaluating convergence or divergence of series uh, that involve factorials like the, this one right so uh, in order to apply the ratio test so first of all notice that uh, all the terms of the, the series are already positive so we don't need to put the uh, absolute value sign in front of the, the series so we can just find um, the ratio a n plus one divided by a n and the, this ratio is, so a n plus one is the, the same thing only with n plus one instead of n, right? So it is going to be what? Three times n plus one factorial divided by two n. So two n plus one, of course. Uh, two n plus one factorial times n plus one factorial. All right, and factorial is, is the product of all the numbers from one until the given one, right? So three times n plus one factorial is one times two times three and so on times three n times three n plus one times three n plus two times three n plus three. Anyway, so divided by a n. So divided by n is basically divided by this term, which means multiplied by the same thing flipped over. So times uh, 
2n factorial times n factorial divided by 3n factorial. All right, um, why is it convenient to apply the ratio test here? Is because of the following thing. Um, so let me first highlight um, this term. Okay. This ratio. I mean, both have three and n in it, right? So let me simplify this. So what is three times n plus one? factorial divided by 3n factorial. So the denominator here is the product of all the numbers from 1 until 3n. So 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 and so on until 3n. And the numerator is the product of numbers 1, 2, 3 and so on all the way until there's going to be 3n but after 3n, there's going to be 3n plus 1. There's going to be 3n plus 2. And there's going to be 3n plus 3. And this part is going to cancel out. All right. So 3n plus 1 factorial divided by 3n factorial is, in fact, just 3n plus 1 times 3n plus 2 times 3n plus 3. All right. So... Um, let me just write it here. A n plus 1 divided by A n is, in fact, 3 n plus 1 times 3 n plus 2 times 3 n plus 3. Well, th there's going to be something else, right? So it's just that I, I have saved it for later. Now I, I can just erase this. And continue okay so now instead of looking at this uh, term let me let me look at 2n factorial here and 2n factorial on top right so maybe um, do it like this so 2n factorial here and 2n plus 1 factorial here. So what is it? So 2n factorial divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. So the numerator is the product of numbers from 1 to all the way to 2n. And the denominator is going to be the product of numbers from 1 to all the way to 2n times, there's going to be two more terms, so 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. So this will cancel out. So the remaining part is just 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2, and it should be in the denominator, right? So this is going to be 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 2. All right. So, and the, the last term that uh, has not yet been accounted for is um, is this. There is n factorial and n plus 1 factorial. So, what is n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial? So n factorial is the product of numbers from 1 all the way to n. And n plus 1 factorial is the product of numbers from all the way to n plus 1. So it includes n, and then we have n plus 1 after n. And again, cancels out. So the remaining part is just 1 over n plus 1. OK. So the ratio of the two consecutive terms of this series uh, is, in fact, a ratio of two cubic polynomials. So notice that um, both numerator and denominator, they are products of three terms, three linear terms, right? So in order to simplify this, so we just need to divide the by the largest power of 
n both numerator and denominator we divide by n cube right and i'm going to do it to kind of distribute this n cube i'm going to divide by n or every one of the three multipliers on top and every one of the three multipliers will be divided by by n okay so this is really and doing that i will get this three plus one over n three plus two over n times three plus three over n uh, on top and in the bottom i still have a similar thing so uh, sorry two so two plus one over n two plus two over n times uh, one plus one over n all right and now i need to take the limit of this so the limit of a n plus one divided by a n as n goes to infinity is going to be basically the where well, i'm taking the limit of this expression and everything over n goes to zero so it's going to be three plus zero times three plus zero times three plus zero divided by two plus zero times two plus zero times one plus zero which is 27 over four which is bigger than one and since it is bigger than one the series diverges okay so this is how the ratio test works and this is kind of the true application of the ratio test when it is really very very convenient and uh, well the, the, this example is fairly complicated so in your exam you will probably get an easier one but um, it kind of shows the true power of the uh, ratio test anyway so let me skip through these steps through the printed steps and finally um, let me go through the convergence of this series uh, and basically here, if you try to apply the ratio test, right? So you need to take the absolute value of a n plus one over a n. And this is going to be, so first I need to write this series replacing n with n plus one. So it's going to be n without the minus one to the n. So it's going to be a lone of Two plus n plus one is is really three plus n divided by n plus two divided by a n so it is just the, the same thing only it is flipped over so times n plus one divided by ln of two plus n well and you 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 can probably immediately guess that the limit of the ratio is just one. So, which means that the series, uh, the, the test is inconclusive. Well, um, now in order to confirm it, so let me uh, do it kind of carefully, right? So, um, the ratio test, so the limit of the ratio is, so the ratio is going to be n plus 1 divided by n plus 2 times a logarithm of 2 plus n divided by logarithm of 3 plus n um, so this part we can divide both numerator and denominator by n and this is going to be 1 plus 1 over n divided by 1 plus 2 over n and this goes to 1 times this part with logarithms uh, so let me do the part with logarithms separately so logarithm of 3 plus n divided by logarithm of 2 plus n. Now, you can, in fact, do it by L'Hopital's rule. And it is probably easier to do it by L'Hopital's rule. But just, you know, just, just to have an example of how we can uh, simply well, work with logarithms without using the L'Hopital's rule, um, here is how we can do it without applying the L'Hopital's rule, right? So basically, we will try to factor out n out of, out of this, right? Um, and we can rewrite it that this is ln of n times uh, 3 over n plus 1 on top divided by logarithm of uh, n times 
2 over n plus 1 in the bottom. But the logarithm of the, of the product is the sum of the logarithms. So this is ln n plus ln of 1 plus 3 over n divided by ln n plus ln of 1 plus 2 divided by n. And basically, this part approaches 0 because it's ln 1. And ln 1 is 0. And this part approaches infinity. Right? So we can, again, sort of take it out. So we can rewrite it as ln n over ln n times 1 plus ln 1 plus 3 over n divided by ln n divided by 1 plus ln 1 plus 2 over n over ln n. And now this part is just, just, just 1 and this goes to 0. This goes to infinity. So 0 divided by infinity is of course still 0. So this is like um, 1. Well, the, 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 the limit of the, this thing is, is still 1, right? So now the, the point, the, the main point is that uh, the limit of the ratio here is 1, which means that the series, the uh, ratio test is inconclusive. Okay, so when we check for convergence using the ratio test, in this case, the series is inconclusive. Okay. So it is just not applicable. Now, can we use some other test? And as a matter of fact, we can, right? So one is to, to check for absolute convergence. And for absolute convergence, we take the same thing without the minus one to the nth um, uh, term. And we know that ln of two plus n divided by n plus one is just bigger than one over n plus one, right? So ln of two plus n is going to be uh, bigger than one. Well, I guess n is at least one. So the input of logarithm is at least three. So which means that logarithm is indeed, um, indeed bigger than one. Okay, um, so, and we know that this series, um, that this series diverges because it is essentially the harmonic series only shifted by, by one, one position, right? So, which means that the original series also diverges. So, it means that uh, our series does not converge absolutely. No absolute convergence. Do we have conditional convergence? So to test for conditional convergence, we can try to apply the alternating series test. So alternating series test. Because our series is indeed alternating. So to, to, to apply the alternating series test, we take the, um, the this term with um, logarithm of 2 plus n and we need to to check two things so one thing is whether the limit is zero right so is it true that the limit of ln of 2 plus n divided by n plus 1 as n goes to infinity is it zero well basically the intuition again tells you that yes it is zero because the numerator is logarithm and the denominator is a linear term and logarithm grows slower than, than a linear term, but um, you know, just just to be safe, so let us apply L'Hopital's rule to it because th this is an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity, and applying L'Hopital's rule, we get uh, the limit as n goes to infinity. So let me not, so I'm not going to switch to x now, right? So let me just use n here. Um, the derivative of the numerator is one over, uh, sorry. Uh, 2 plus n, 2 plus n. The derivative of the denominator is minus 1 over n plus 1 squared, and the limit is indeed 0. Okay, 
so the limit of our um, sequence is indeed zero so the remaining um, thing to to verify is um, is just whether the, the sequence is is decreasing so is it true that uh, the sequence alone of 2 plus n divided by n plus 1 is it decreasing well so let me let me do that well so let me again so write that f of x so here i'm going to use x but it's going to be um the lawn of 2 plus x divided by x plus 1 so f prime of x so i, I want to check whether f prime of x is, is negative for large enough x so f prime of x is going to be well the numerator is 1 over 2 plus x uh, times x plus 1 minus logarithm of 2 plus x times 1 everything divided by x plus 1 squared so this is um, what I guess x plus 1 um, minus 2 plus x times ln of 2 plus x divided by 2 plus x times x plus 1 squared. Well, I guess this should be negative. So why is this negative? So to, to make sure that this is negative, let me rewrite it a little bit. So let me take out, collect the terms with x. Uh, in the numerator and it's going to be x minus x alone of 2 plus x plus 1 minus 2 alone 2 plus x divided by 2 plus x times x plus 1 squared okay now this term, so here we have a positive term 1 and a negative term 2 ln of 2 plus x. So this is negative as long as uh, 2 ln of 2 plus x is bigger than 1. So which means that ln of 2 plus x it should be bigger than half, which is true because ln x is in fact bigger than 1, not even bigger than half. So yes, it is negative. So yes, it is negative. How about this term? Is it negative? And this is x times 1 minus ln 2 plus x. And again, so it is negative as long as ln of 2 plus x is bigger than 1. And it is bigger than 1 because x is at least 1. So ln of 2 plus x is at least ln of 3, which is already bigger than 1. So, which means that the numerator here is the sum of two negative uh, numbers and divided by a positive number, so it is indeed negative. So, this sequence is decreasing, is in fact de decreasing from the first term. So, and since we have a sequence that is decreasing and has limit zero times minus one to the n, the series converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so um to put it together our series uh, converges conditionally all right so here is the rest of the question and uh, that's all about um, the ratio test